Do you find that your Excel sheets don't look quite right? Maybe it's the colors, the font type, or the overall structure, but you can't quite put a finger on why. Don't worry, you're not alone, so let me show you five of the most common formatting mistakes and how to fix them to make your Excel sheets actually look professional. First up, we have a cover page, and instead of just opening up an Excel file, as you can see right here, and seeing some random data, if you're able to have a cover page, it adds a much more polished and professional look. Here you can see we have a title, a logo, and a table of contents on the side, so with that we're able to know exactly how many and which worksheets we can find inside of the file, and by clicking on them, we can navigate directly into that worksheet. We also have the middle area, which is more for general settings, so seeing things like which company is being analyzed here, as this is a valuation model, which currency we're using, the start date for the model, and the tax rates. All the way to the right, we can also see some status updates. So when was this model last updated, by who, and who was it created by with their contact info, in case we have some questions. Something like this is actually surprisingly easy to make, so let me show you by pressing Ctrl N to open up a new Excel file. Let's work on it here. First, I'm just gonna select on this top left and change the background color to a dark blue one, like this. Now you can see everything is in dark blue, and let's suppose that we want the actual cover text to be around this area roughly. I'm just gonna change the fill color there to a white like that. Now you can see we have the overall structure. Let me zoom in a bit more. Obviously, you can add whatever text that you want in here, and if you want the table of contents, let's say this is going to be sheet number two. Let me just actually create a second sheet so we can navigate there. All we need to do now is press Ctrl K. That's the hyperlink pop-up, and within it, you can see that we have the choice of registering an email address, but in this case, we just want to place in this document, and more specifically, we want to hit the second sheet and press on OK. So now whenever we click here, it's gonna take us to that second sheet and that's the start of a table of contents. It's really that simple and it makes your Excel files look a lot more polished and professional. That said, if you don't want other people tweaking the cover page, like maybe changing the title and things like that, there's a very easy fix. Just right click on the cover page itself here on the bottom and click on protect sheet. When you do, you'll notice that we can add a password and we can pick and choose what we want protected and what we don't as well. Let me press on cancel there to go back. Secondly, we have color choice and using excessively bright colors or too many different colors can easily make your file look a lot more unprofessional. In fact, when we look at reports of some big companies, like in this case, it's JP Morgan's, you can see that in this table over here, they really only use this one light color and everything else is just black or white with some borders and bold. Similarly, in the case of Visa over here, you can see that they just use the blue color, they use this yellow line once, and then everything else seems to just be in black and white. And finally, looking at a tech firm, you'll notice that they also follow a similar pattern. In this case, they do use one orange color, but that's it. They don't use any other ones than just black and white. Specifically, looking at this in Excel, you'll notice with this file, for instance, it doesn't look quite right. And that's in part because it's got so many different bright colors. In fact, this data is the exact same as this other files over here. The only difference is that I've arranged the formatting. You'll notice I've added some totals. I've also added some extra spaces in between to give it some separation. And up top for the headers, generally how I like to do it is add a dark color like this dark blue and change the font color to a white. I think that makes it stand out a bit more. Some people would say not to add a highlight color like this yellow, on this bottom part so i could easily change that just for you to see what it looks like into this white so both kind of work it really depends on your personal preference similarly i try to avoid some of the features in conditional formatting namely the very bright colors for instance over here let me just select this part and suppose i want to do a conditional formatting when you use the color scales i find these to be a bit too colorful they have very different contrast colors so I prefer to just use the bottom parts, which are just going from white to green. I think that's a bit easier to read than going from blue to red or green and red. Alternatively, you could use just the data bars, which is what I've done on this right hand side. I find these to be a lot more elegant. And speaking of design, an excellent way to visualize your data is using chart templates like the ones HubSpot is kindly providing us. By clicking the link in the description below, you can access a variety of Excel graph templates completely for free. The download includes an Excel file with instructions on how to use the templates, 
along with a range of chart types to visualize your data. You can easily modify your data within these templates and the charts will automatically update. These templates can accommodate either a single column of data or multiple columns depending on your needs. I personally find this graph template most useful to visualize my data in several different charts so I can pick and choose which one I like the most. So I recommend visiting the link in the description below to download this completely free graph templates from HubSpot to level up your Excel game and thanks to them for sponsoring this video. The third feature I'd recommend is adding some interactive elements to your Excel file. And there's really three main elements I'd recommend for this. First up, we have subtotal grouping. So let's suppose that we have this area right here, and it would be nice to group things by the east, by the north, the south, etc. For that, it's actually quite easy to do. We just need to go to data and click on this outline button. Within it, we're going to go for the subtotal You'll notice we'll get this pop-up and we want at each change in range, we want the sum of the revenue. That's fine by us. We're just going to press on OK. And you'll notice when we do, we get all of these groups on the left-hand side. So I can press the number three, number two, and number one to do the different groupings. So one is the grand total, two is the regional total, and then three is for seeing everything. We can also see the totals for each section in here. All of this is part of grouping. So if I were to select these two columns and go to outline and click on group, you'll notice that we can do the same thing from a column perspective. The second interactive element is adding a navigation menu. So you'll notice in this other Excel file, I've got this left hand side with these different icons. So if I press on this one right here, it takes me to the data. With this one, it's gonna take me to the email, so the contact area. And this just takes me back to the dashboard. Making something like this is also very simple. We just need to open up a new Excel file, highlight the whole first column, and let's change the color of that to a dark blue. Then within this area, we just wanna add a few different icons. So I'm just gonna go to insert and choose icons here, and I can choose whichever icon I want. I'm just gonna randomly select this one and hit insert. When I do, let me change the fill color to a white. And now all I need to do is right click on it and go to link. When I do here under place in this document, I can choose which sheet that I want the hyperlink to. And we've got a navigation menu. We now need to do the same thing with each of the other sheets in the Excel file. And the final element would be a drop down. If we look at this file right here with the employee registration form, under the department, we have all of these department options. So it would be nice to have that as a drop down. It's very easy to do just by going to the data tab again and clicking on data validation, which is this button right here. And we just wanna add a list. It's gonna be a list of all of these different values on the right hand side and hit on okay. Now you'll notice we have that drop down, which actually serves two purposes. One is because it's nice and easy to use. And the other one is so that people can't just put any random department here. So instead of legal, maybe they just wanna put legal team and hit enter, you'll notice they get an error sign and that's because it's not matching to the list that we've got over here. Next up, we've got formatting inconsistencies. So let's take a look with this example. You'll notice that there's actually a few things that are quite different. First, this is a different font type. Also the values, you can see that these are slightly different. Some have commas, others have decimal places. Over here with the charts, some are on the bottom for the legend, others are on the side. And also the colors are slightly different. This one has data labels, this one doesn't. So it's important to make sure you keep these things consistent. One of the ways to prevent this from happening is by using the themes inside of Excel. For that, we just need to go over to page layout and you'll notice under this themes area, we can have themes by color. So you can see right here when I hover over them, they're gonna switch around. And we can also have the themes by customize the colors. So if you want a specific color palette, maybe for your company, you can add it in here. Same thing with the fonts. You can change the fonts for the entire Excel file. And if we click on this themes area right here, we can go ahead and save whatever current theme that we customize. Staying on the topic of formatting, I find it very useful to have a sheet just like this one where I've got some formatting best practices. It reminds me of what kind of header I should have. It reminds me of what kind of subheader I should have as well as all of the different formatting types that I should use right here with the exact structure on the right. I also have some of the key colors I should be using and the secondary ones. 
This way, if I have some numbers over, let's say here, I'm just going to put 100 and I want to format it with this X. All I need to do is copy it. And then here, I'm just going to control Alt V and paste the formats. When I do that, you'll notice I now have that X on this value. So having this type of supporting document really saves me hours of time. And if you want to get one yourself, I'm actually providing it completely for free in the video description. So go ahead and get it for yourself too. The final and easiest fix before we get to the bonus section is the table format. If you notice, when you just have a raw data set like this one over here without any formatting, by far the fastest way to format is just by pressing Ctrl T and hit enter. There, it's going to format it into the Excel table format, which overall I would say looks quite decent on its own. Even better there, we can go ahead and change it under table styles if you really wanted to or create your own table style to match your company's colors. That's not all though, by having a table style, you can unlock a lot of different features. For instance, for a filter, I can go ahead and insert what's known as a slicer. Maybe I want one for each of the quarters that we have available. So I've got this quarter slicer on the side, which is basically a visual type of filter. Instead of having to go to this drop down and choosing one or the other, all I need to do is click on any of these and you'll notice how I'm able to see all of the different values nicely filtered. I think this adds a very professional feel and in fact I can go ahead and change parts of these slicers so I can make this obviously smaller and under the slicer area the ribbon on the top now I can change it to not one column but maybe I want it in four different columns like this so it's nice and small up top. I can also add several other slicers if I want to. Last but not least in the bonus section we've got this model right here with the startup forecast and you can see it's actually quite a long file. In this type of scenario, we always want to be able to see the header. Right now, I don't really know if this figure right here is for the month of June or the month of July, and I don't really have a reference for any of them. That's because I need to scroll back up to the header area. To avoid this, we can actually use a feature called freeze panes. All we need to do is click on an area below the parts that we want to freeze. Let's say I want to freeze from row number four, so I'm just going to click below it, and I'm going to head over to the view tab. Then all the way to the right, I'm going to click on freeze panes. Then press on freeze panes again within this drop down. And now if we scroll lower down, you'll notice that this top area stays frozen. So we're able to navigate all the way down while still seeing the header values. Now it's easy to tell that this one right here is for the month of May. Actually, the way we've done it, we can also go ahead and look to the side like this. So if this is maybe a 24 month schedule, then it's very easy to know what exactly we're referring to here on the left. Awesome, these are some general formatting tips and let me know down in the comments if you found this helpful. But if you want design tips specifically for pivot tables, you should watch this video over here where I covered that in detail or check out our Excel course over here. Hit the like and the subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.